Eagle 7 here, and in this video I'd like to discuss dynamic rollover. Has this ever happened to you? You get your helicopter light on the skids, you start to slide to the left or slide to the right, and your helicopter comes in contact with an object, and despite putting in opposite control inputs or lowering the collective, you crash? Well, you may have just entered into dynamic rollover. So let's talk about it. A helicopter is susceptible to a lateral rolling tendency called dynamic rollover when it is in contact with the surface during takeoff and landings. For dynamic rollover to occur, some factor must first cause the helicopter to roll or pivot around a skid or landing gear wheel until its critical rollover angle is reached. The angle at which dynamic rollover occurs will vary based on helicopter type. Then, beyond this point, main rotor thrust continues the roll and recovery is impossible. After this angle is achieved, the cyclic does not have any sufficient range of control to eliminate the thrust component and convert it to lift. If the critical rollover angle is exceeded, the helicopter rolls on its side regardless of the cyclic corrections made. Dynamic rollover begins when the helicopter starts to pivot laterally around its skid or wheel. For dynamic rollover to occur, the following three factors must be present. One, we must have a rolling moment. Two, a pivot point other than the helicopter's normal center of gravity. And three, thrust greater than the weight. Dynamic rollover may also occur if you use improper landing or takeoff techniques or while performing sloped operations, and we can discuss that in a later video. Whatever the cause, dynamic rollover is possible if not using the proper corrective technique. Once started, dynamic rollover cannot be stopped by the application of opposite cyclic control alone. For example, the left skid contacts an object and becomes the pivot point. While the helicopter starts rolling to the left, even with full right cyclic applied, the main rotor thrust and its moment follows the aircraft as it continues rolling to the left. Quickly reducing collective pitch is about the most effective way to stop dynamic rollover from developing. But it is important to remember rotor blades have a limited range of movement. When we move the cyclic left and right, the rotor disc can only tilt so far. If the tilt or roll of the helicopter exceeds that range, usually around 5 to 8 degrees in general aviation aircraft, the controls, the cyclic, can no longer command a vertical lift component and the thrust or lift becomes a lateral force that rolls the helicopter over. So you must remember that in order to remove the thrust, the collective must be lowered as this is the only recovery technique available. Certain conditions reduce the critical rollover angle, thus increasing the possibility for dynamic rollover and reducing the chance for recovery. The rate of the rolling motion is also a consideration because as the roll rate increases, there is a reduction of the critical rollover angle at which recovery is still possible. Other critical conditions include operating at high gross weights with thrust approximately equal to the weight. The following conditions are most critical for helicopters with counterclockwise rotor rotation. One, right side skid or landing wheel down since the translating tendency or the thrust produced by the tail rotor adds to the rollover force to right ladder, lateral center of gravity one side of the helicopter is heavier than the other three a crosswind from the left or four a left yaw inputs so what does that all mean let's take a look at the diagram we had up on the screen we can see our helicopter is right skid down in this scenario but let's back up just a moment. When this helicopter was level on the ground, that black arrow main rotor thrust was perpendicular to the main rotor mast right down the, the middle of the helicopter. And you can see as this helicopter got light on the skids, the right skid got stuck on something, creating a pivot point. And as that helicopter starts to roll, you can see our red arrow 
is what we call a horizontal component of lift and as that helicopter rolls even further that red arrow is gonna get further and further from the black arrow that's our horizontal component of lift and as that red arrow gets further and further away from the black arrow our thrust instead of per being perpendicular to the main rotor of the helicopter has a horizontal component to it which pulls or rolls the helicopter over causing you to enter into dynamic rollover and remember the recovery technique is recognizing that you're in that situation quickly and lowering the collective as quickly as possible in an attempt to recover Take a look at this video again. As the helicopter enters into a stationary hover, our lift is perpendicular to our main rotor mast. Now as the helicopter starts to slide to the left, our rotor disc tilts to the left slightly, that increasing our horizontal component of lift. So not all of our lift is going perpendicular. We have lift now going off to the left side. And as the roll rate increases after we contact our pivot point, that horizontal component of lift increases and pulls the helicopter over onto its side and we've now entered into dynamic rollover. Increasing our collective or opposite cyclic will have no effect. All we could have done is lower the collective in that situation. So I hope that helps your understanding of dynamic rollover and how to recover from it. And we'll see you on